Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today, we've got episode number 55 for you all. I don't know what the title of this podcast is officially going to be yet. All I know is this is about to be a generational episode from us. I got so much to talk about. I promise y'all, if you're watching this, if I had a full black suit to put on, I would have put it on. We did come with the all black, though. We did we, come with the all black. Business. Yeah. It's business. Because some of y'all's favorite teams, some of y'all's favorite players, fraudulent. Real fraudulent. Uh-oh. I got a lot to get into today. So we're not going to waste any time. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on the socials. You see them at the bottom of the screen. At Off The Glass Pod on Instagram. At Off The Glass Podcast on TikTok. We are trying. We like are on a pretty decent pace to potentially hit a thousand followers on the Instagram before the end of the NBA playoffs. That's only possible if y'all hit the follow button. So if you're listening and you're not following, what are you doing? It only take a second of your day. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you feel me? Make a dream come true. <laughs> be, be a dream maker. <laughs> um. Without further ado, so much has happened in the last time that we recorded. So much has happened today, which is why I'm so glad we're getting to record right now. And we're going to start with the most breaking news, which is Darvin Ham fired. Get him out of here. Even Wilder, not- it's been reported that Rob Polinka did it on the <clears throat> phone. Couldn't even meet with Buddy in person. That's disrespectful. Hey, man, you had to go. I'm not going to lie. You had to go. I don't care how you did it. I don't care if you sent him a letter in the mail. You had to go, bro. Look, you know, with all and for people listening, we are recording this at six o'clock on Friday. I literally have the Cleveland Orlando game going on right now. So just so y'all have a time frame of when we're all saying this, I think Cleveland, Cleveland Orlando is first and then Dallas Clippers are tonight um, after that both game sixes. But. In regards to anything Lakers related, I always turn it over to you first as the resident Lakers fan on the podcast. So I'm going to ask you two questions. A, how we doing, Dame, as always. But B, how are we feeling about Darvin Ham being fired? I feel like those two questions Mm -hmm. probably go hand in hand right now. Well, I'm feeling great, man. I'm feeling great for multiple reasons. I'm feeling great because NBA playoffs is on. I'm also feeling great because... When your team gets eliminated, it's a lot less stressful. Uh, you can just watch ball. You don't really have to, you know what I'm saying? The blood pressure blood pressure got to rise a little bit. And then, obviously, we got the guy up out of here. We got Darvin Hand up out of here. Now, look, I want to preface this by saying, though, I'm never – honestly, I never was the type to be, like, a scapegoat the coach type of person. Like, granted, I'm not even a LeBron fan, so the whole, like, LeBron-led teams just get the coaches fired. That's never been me because I'm I'm like I'm a Lakers fan, I'm not a LeBron fan, so I don't really care about none of that. But Frank Vogel, I never was like, oh, I'll get Frank Vogel out of here. He's a mm-hmm. huge problem. Like, bro, we won a championship with Frank Vogel. Like, you got to be decent to you can do it to win we'll a championship. Talk, we'll talk about Frank Vogel too, we'll right? Get right. To him. So like that to me, that's just never like I've never been the type to be like, oh, something goes wrong, instantly the coach. With that being said, I'm so glad they got Darvin him out of here, bro, because. Listen, I just want to say there's a lot of things that went went wrong with the season or a lot of people that can take some blame. Now, to me, I feel like Darvin Ham is definitely top two because I think that the lack of adjustments, Mm -hmm. the lack of just smart rotations and just proper rotations – uh, as far as just, like, people subbing in and out of the lineups that he have on the court. And the lack of him having common sense to call a timeout yeah. when the other team is on a run. Yeah. Pissed me off so much to a point where I'm like, bro, like, please. Like, you got to wake up, bro. Like, you ever see the meme where they're like, um, Darvin can call a timeout and he's like, chill, I'm watching the game. Like, that's what it feel like. I swear, I swear he's like, bro, I'm just, I'm just chill. I'm a fan. I'm just watching the game. That's what it feels like, bro. Like the amount of times, and I guess we'll get into it more when we talk about the Lakers, uh, getting eliminated in general. Um, that third quarter nuggets going to run, which is to be expected at this point. But like, 
when the run starts, boom, call a timeout. When they're in the middle of the run, boom, call a timeout. I watched this guy last game legit wait until the Nuggets took the lead and then was like, ah, oh, let me call the timeout now. What's the point now? It's like, too what's, it's too late. They already got the momentum. They already have the lead now, bro. Like, that type of stuff to, yeah, definitely pissed me off. And, I mean, it's a little bit tough because he is still a young head coach. Like, this is only his second season uh, ever coaching. But – some like some had to change, bro. Some had to change. And like I said, I don't think it was like just completely Darvin Ham's fault through and through. Um, because I do think roster construction wise, like granted, I th- I thought we had a good roster. Don't get me wrong. I'm not blaming it on like oh, we never had the pieces to compete. I just think that we didn't do it as smart as we could have, as far as mm-hmm. another big man in there. Um. And honestly, in general, since we won the championship in 2020, breaking like that was the formula. And then to stray away from that all these years has always been on the front office. So Mm -hmm. me, I think number one is is the front office from that aspect. I love it. I love it. But they've done better things to kind of make up for it to the point where Darvin Ham gets most of the blame. But in reality, I I think it's the front office's fault from ever straying away from what worked in 2020. And even in 2021, I feel like in 2021, if we don't, if they don't get hurt, like who knows what happens? Like it's just like they had one injury riddled season, got bounced in the first round, saw the Nets get James Harden and instantly panicked. It was like, oh my God, we need Russell Westbrook. Like right. let's just trade everybody, trade our role players and get Russell Westbrook. That's a front office fault. The fact that they made up for it as far as like getting him out of here, bringing D'Lo in, bringing Vando in, that still kind of messed up that season because they were playing from behind that whole season and then we're still like we got rid of key role players with the russell westbrook trade like it was just um it just is a bunch of things but ultimately i think who's to blame would be the front office and then darvin ham um and then some of us i mean a lot of it, a, a little bit of it is on the players as well i think that's the the top two right there so in general i'm glad to see darvin ham gone if i had to if i had 100 percent of the blame to distribute for what has happened in LA. Off rip, probably like 70% has to go to the front office. Right. And like off the strength of that, that makes me feel like this Darvin Ham firing is making him out to become the scapegoat. But when we look at um the Lakers tenure with LeBron, A, I've seen people start to already like pull back out and like try to view it since it's been what five four four or five years now that he's been there Mm -hmm. and like try to be like well is his tenure a failure or success that's dumb at the end of the day he won a ring like all right that's dumb stop it the other seasons whatever you won a ring that's what you are like if you asked any other fan base if they had a five window period and they were able to get one ring they would be happy they would be content if like, you win, I don't care if I, I literally don't care if you're the worst team in the league the other four years, bro. If you win a ring, it's a, it's like a, a success, bro. Right. This is what I will say though. Like you mentioned, them making the decision to trade for Russell Westbrook has mortgaged their current roster, and they're still dealing with the effects from that. Mm-hmm. I disagree with you. I don't think that Darvin Ham is necessarily. It's not to say that he is blameless. No one in the organization is blameless. I do think that the personnel that he has, like, I genuinely like, especially because now it's been multiple days since the series have been over. I've sat and I've thought, like, really, what else could I have wanted him to do? What else could I have wanted the Lakers to do in that series to be more competitive? Because it was, it felt eerily similar to the series last year, where in every single game the Lakers have a lead. The Lakers are in every single game, all the way down to the literal very end. It took two different Jamal Murray game winners for the Nuggets to win two games in this series. So it's not like y'all are getting the break speed off we all. But at the same time, you're going up against a the defending champions from last year who bounced y'all out in the Western Conference Finals last year. And this year, y'all draw them in the first round. And that's my pick to win the NBA championship again this year. Would this? Would we even be having this conversation if it was a, an inverse of last season? Or not an inverse, a repeat. Like, if the Lakers matched up a different way and met Denver in the Western Conference Finals again, 
And all these games played out the same way. They, they lost in five, but it was a competitive five game series. Do you think Darvinham would be fired? I I just think yeah, because I think the change needs to be made. I th- I mean, you saying so if they met like the Western Conference Finals this year, right? Like let's say like that it was the same same type of story as last year. Like the Lakers come out of the play and they get all the way to Western Conference Finals. The Nuggets are rolling. Y'all meet again in the Western Conference Finals, and you could have the exact same series. You have the five game series. Every single game is close. You blow some big leads, but like you're in every single game. Do you think Darvin Ham still gets fired in that that instance? There's a higher chance he doesn't, but there's also a good chance that he does off the strength of people just calling for his job, saying like something needs to change. Like so, I I definitely see what you mean from that aspect. It would be a it definitely would be a little bit different from the uh, media's viewpoint because it's like mm-hmm. then it goes from you guys got bounced in the first round, something needs to change to. Darvin Ham got you to two Western Conference Finals. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you lost to – especially if they go on to win the championship, then it might – I see what you mean. It might be more of like a you're just not better than Denver type of thing. I yeah, just and, think – And I think that that's a – like, genuinely, that's a fair way to view it. And that's how I really view this series. I literally was talking to somebody the other day, and they asked me about the Lakers and Denver series, and he was like, you know, I've never, I've never been huge on AD, and I cut him off, and I was like, I genuinely believe this is one of the best playoff series Anthony Davis has ever played. Anthony and Davis. It was, it was a five-game series, and he they lost four to one, and I think this is one of the best series he's ever played. See, the, the, to me, that's the reason why I give Darvin him a little bit more of the blame because if you look at it from this aspect of like. Anthony Davis played one of the best playoff series he's ever played, right? He played fantastic. Granted, like, mm-hmm. sometimes in the fourth quarter, he disappeared a little bit. But he just as far as – Not sometimes. Over- it was, like, yeah. three games. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, cutting him some slack. But, like, overall, I feel like he played a fantastic series. Mm-hmm. Um, doing, uh, to me, doing what I asked him to do of, like, look, if Jokic is going to kill you on the defensive end because he's going to do that to everyone, like, no one's going to stop Jokic, you have right. to attack him on the off on when you're on offense and make him work a little bit. He was aggressive offensive or scoring wise. He was great. Defense has always been there. Um, like he played great. You know what you're going to get from LeBron. Um, obviously, like the role players didn't play their best series, but it's like you instead of having like D'Lo, who absolutely disappeared the last uh, Western Conference Finals, he at least gave you some games and some moments where he played well. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason why I say it's to me, a lot of it is a huge coaching mismatch is because they were up. At, like first half, the Lakers was great. They were great, and then what it was every after, game, every game, every single game. And what was it after halftime when adjustments are made? The the switch just flipped. Now, granted, I still don't get me wrong. I think that the Nuggets are just a better team. Like, don't I don't think it's like Lakers are here, Nuggets are here, and coaching just got a, a mismatch. Like, no, I think Dem- Denver is better. But I think that the coaching mismatch was also huge. And it showed in the fact that every time in the third quarter after halftime is when they started to make their run. So to me, that's why I feel like Darvin Ham should get, like I said, I, I think the front office gets like first of the blame, but I think Darvin Ham is right there second. Um, Cause I just, I, I don't think, don't get me wrong. I think the, the, the Denver Nuggets are better, but I don't think it's as bad as it was mm-hmm. last year. I swear like this year felt I agree. different as far as, like even you probably seen that stat going around like Lakers led for I don't know how many more yeah, they they were up for a significantly more of the games than exactly than Denver was just could not execute which comes down to don't get me wrong coaching but also Nikola Jokic because he is the, the was the best player on the court so you can yep. now you can't just discredit that but to me like I said I don't think the talent discrepancy was as big this year as it was last year and that could be due to I don't know, more rest, a healthier LeBron, just an overall better Anthony Davis, whatever it may be. I just don't think the talent was as big of a difference Mm -hmm. as even like the final record of this series show in like five one. My uh, my biggest thing with this firing is I I don't know what what other lineup Darwin could have thrown out. What other like what other adjustments? could he have really tapped into? And, like, maybe I'm giving him too much slack, but, like, I'm really trying to sit here and be rational and think, like, he he's tried AD on Jokic. He's tried Rui on Jokic. Vanderbilt is hurt. Christian Wood is hurt. We don't have those guys at the option. There's literally no other big bodies on the roster outside of Jackson Hayes, and I don't like Jackson Hayes and AD on the floor at the same time. 
Just like he's tried everything he could, I think, on Jokic. We got good games out of D'Angelo Russell, and then we got absolute stinkers out of D'Angelo Russell. And then D'Angelo Russell turned into a little prima donna in, what was it, game four or game five, Mm -hmm. where he just didn't want to be a part of the huddle. Like, you want to talk about coaching there, maybe, but, like, at the end of the day, that's D'Angelo Russell kind of being a diva. Um, Like, there are so many other things that I feel like have gotten chalked up to Lakers coaches getting fired. Like, obviously, it started with Luke Wall, and then they bring in Frank Vogel. Then they get rid of Frank Vogel. They bring in Darvin Ham, and now Darvin Ham is out. And now you're looking at a short list of guys. One of the people I've seen getting thrown to those conversations is his podcast buddy, J.J. That's, Reddick. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> um, to potentially become the, the next head coach for the Lakers. But, like, how many times can you be like, we'll just get a new coach, we'll just get a new coach, we'll just get a new coach, if nothing's changing? Like. You got rid of Luke Walton in the very first year. Then you made the Anthony Davis trade. Then you won a championship. And then Rob Polinka said, well, all the things that helped us win that championship, Kyle Kuzma, KCP, Al Caruso. Caruso. Mm Bye-bye. We're going to bring in Russell Westbrook because like some of these other GMs or owners, like we'll get to, they got to have the big three. They got to have the third star. And y'all are still – paying the consequences of that trade from a personnel perspective. So I just feel like I don't know what more Darvin Ham genuinely could have done. He coached him to a Western Conference Finals, lost to the what ended up being the the champions. Granted, it was a sweep. But it was a, it's one of the, you really can't get a sweep much closer than that. The following year, you go out of the plan, you match up with the exact same team, and it's almost identical series. Like, is a five game series instead of a sweep, but every single game was close. Execution down the stretch matters a ton. Yes, you can play some of that on Darwin, but at the end of the day, and I said this when we were talking in the playoffs last year about uh, Joel Embiid, Doc Rivers could not get on the court and give Joel Embiid the ball. He couldn't get on the court and make Joel Embiid get the ball in his hands in the post when it was game seven against the Celtics and he didn't have a post touch for the last five minutes after he was literally unguardable the whole game. There's multiple games in this series where Anthony Davis is going at Jokic and Jokic just, he, he's not going to get himself in foul trouble. He's too valuable. So how is it that we keep getting to these fourth quarters where the LeBron and Anthony Davis pick and roll, the, the Nuggets just don't seem to have an answer to it. And then we're like getting away from it. We're not even forcing them to make a real adjustment. Like, they're just trying different things. They maybe swap KCP and Aaron Gordon, and it's like, we're just not even trying it anymore as, like, if you're the Lakers. Um, Anthony Davis's aggression drops off a cliff um, in the fourth quarter in multiple games of the series. Like, I just think there's so much more here that Darvin Ham is just becoming the scapegoat, which it happens. It's going to happen in other places this offseason. It might happen in Phoenix, um, which is unfortunate. It's a reality of really the sports business. It's always going to be a what have you done for me lately type of thing. And so going back to that initial point about, you know, people really viewing this Lakers stint with LeBron, this, you know, five-year stretch is like, okay, he won the ring in the bubble. But since then it's been, was it first round exit against Phoenix? And then Western Conference Finals, and then you lose against Denver, and then now you lose against Denver again. And so you feel like a change has to happen. I just don't know if bringing in a new coach, and this is the the roster that y'all are going to field, makes a big difference. The the thing that gets me even more is, you know, Rob Palenka talks about now they have those three first-round picks that they're going to move to get additional talent. And so then if you go out and get a new coach and then you also bring in a better, you know, one or two complimentary pieces, like who's to say that Darvin Ham couldn't have been better with those pieces? Like I just, it's, it's tough. And I get where you're coming from. I just feel like it, it feels very like they had to put the blame somewhere and it's almost always goes to the coach because you're not going to get LeBron out of there. You're not going to get AD out of there. The next guy that falls in line is going to be LeBron. I'm about to kill this spider that is crawling on my wall. <laughs> One tapped him, but <laughs> One t- <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's my biggest thing with the whole the whole Darvin thing. This is now going to be the fourth coach if LeBron stays in LA. 
Um, it's not going to be the fourth coach that he's he's played under in what's going on his sixth year, right? Um, this would be going into the sixth year, I think, right? Right. So mm-hmm. it, it just feels like, you know, we're, we're, y'all are getting repetitive with what you think the answer is. And I think I talked about it on literally the last podcast. Like, again, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. If you're going to go through now your fourth coach to think that something is really going to change about this organization, it just doesn't seem like that's really making a difference. So Yeah. I, I So, like, my thing is I think that two things could be true at once. I think that them taking the approach of disappointing season firing the coach has been a bad thing for them to do. And also, in this particular situation, he needed to go. Because I agree with you. I think that, like I said, Luke Walton, that, like, I, I agree with what you're saying. It's like, all right, we made the Anthony Davis trade. Oh my God, we have a better season. Like, obviously, we probably brought right. in Anthony Davis. Like, this wasn't like, oh, Frank Gold, Frank Vogel just unlocked something. Like, no. Right. Like, same thing you said about Darvin. Who's to say with Luke Walton? Like, that couldn't have happened. Same thing with Frank Vogel is like we win the win the championship, have it literally have like an in like basically an excuse. Like, bro, we're injured in the first round. That's like we lost that series. We're injured completely blow it up and fire Frank Vogel. Like that just doesn't make sense to me, but also Darvin Ham. I don't think that this series got, I don't think this series got him fired. Mm-hmm. I think that it was just a, a collection of everything. Cause I, there's people calling for his job when they made it to the Western conference finals saying that they don't that like is, the rotations yep. saying that they don't like him, like not calling timeout. Like they were already calling for his job. Then right. the fact I want to, I want to make sure it's clear. I'm not out here saying that Darvin Ham is, an elite coach by any stretch of the no, I, feel you. <laughs> I just don't feel like he's like that, that is the change that needs to happen that's really gonna really flip the switch or how these Lakers seasons have been going I could very easily see y'all bring in a new coach and then you end up with the same result Absolutely. and y'all are keep in this cycle of like oh well we got to get rid of the coach and it's like yeah. <laughs> there has to be bigger changes that happen than that no I feel you 100% I just think that with this one specifically like I said I've I've never been the type. I don't think I've ever once said Frank Vogel has to go. I don't think I've ever said that. And like I said, with all these other LeBron teams, I wasn't a LeBron fan, so I kind of didn't really care of what happened to their coach. But with Darvin Ham, it's like even people are calling for a job when it's like we're starting Tory and Prince over Rui and we're losing games and we got a lineup that got us to the Western Conference Finals last year that we're not running. Like like I said, it's just a collection of everything, so I don't think that this series is the main thing that got him fired. Because honestly, like I said, as far as rotations-wise, he wasn't really doing anything that was horrible in this series. Um, Like I said, to me, the biggest things were the lack of adjustments and Mm -hmm. the fact that, bro, they're going on a run, call a timeout. Like, that's the main – that really is the main thing that was pissing me off. Like, bro, call a timeout. But um, but yeah, in general, I, I think that I do agree with you that f- just the constant repetitiveness of firing the coach and hoping that stuff is going to change is just it's not the answer. But I also think that this was needed. Um, But I mean, if you're just being honest, like that's it is what happens with LeBron led teams. It's like the blame does have to go somewhere mm-hmm. um, and it and, will and, never go to him. No, nah, it's just never going to go to him, which is which is. Listen, <laughs> and it's crazy because, like, there's some stuff. Don't get me wrong. I'm not coming for LeBron. We wouldn't be here without LeBron, this, that, and the third. But you know what the, What I think the biggest play of the game was that last game? What? Was the Aaron Gordon rebound. That oh, LeBron yeah. didn't box him out. So, you know what I think? It's, also, a, it's a lot of LeBron, oh, he about to shoot? I'm just not going to close out. And I like, get it. I get like, it, bro. The, He's, you're 39. Up. You're 39. That's your rotation? You just it, you just don't got it in the tank. I understand mm-hmm. those knees. The he's talking about it on the podcast. That feet got a lot of miles on it. Okay. But at the end of the day, we have to call a spade a spade, bro. Yeah, I, we've been seeing it for years, yeah, facts. <laughs> and it's not good enough to beat a team like Denver with those pieces around him. He needs better pieces around him if he's going to really want to get that that fifth ring, which yeah. genuinely. As much as it pains me to say this, because I'm a guy who really believes LeBron is the greatest basketball player to ever walk planet Earth. I think it's over, bro. I don't think that championship window exists for him anymore. Barring of like a crazy team. Steph KD team up with the Warriors. Right. Type. Which I do have a video coming out on that. I'll stay tuned. But I wouldn't be mad at like a one last dance with all three. That would be crazy. Woo! 
that crazy. Was fire. And I'm not even like, bro, like I said, I'm a Lakers fan. So, like, it wouldn't do me nothing to see him leave. <laughs> but just as a basketball fan, seeing yeah. that would be crazy. But, yeah, honestly, the, the problem with it is, it's, bro, it's it's a new guy, bro. Like, sometimes, like, all right, I guess this ties into the whole is the five years of the Lakers a failure, right? Because we look at it from this aspect. Bro, even the first year, the Lakers was a top seed in the West before LeBron got hurt. Even with all the young guys, with Alonzo, B.I., and all of them. So that season, I wouldn't say it's a failure. Even if you want to go season by season, that season's not a failure. It's a disappointment because of injury. Then you win the championship. That already makes every other season not a failure, but let's just go year by year. Season after that, right. injured, bounced in the first round, not a failure. Trades for Westbrook, that's a failure. But then made up for it by still making the Western Conference Finals and losing to the, the champs that were just better than you. Not a failure. This year, I could say... I mean, record wise, it was a little bit disappointing. If the de- if, like, even still, y'all went forty-seven and thirty. Y'all won more games this year than you did the year you made the conference finals. The West man, is just, was just outrageously better. stacked. Now, if Denver goes on and wins the finals, which brings me to what I'm about to say, they're just better. It's just their time, bro. Like sometimes it's like, bro, you're just not better, bro. And it's a little bit tough. When cause I think the problem is this is the problem. I feel like I feel like as basketball fans, right? For majority of people, obviously barring like super like older people, your whole life you've known LeBron James as being the best guy on in the world. He's gonna get it done. He's the out like he's at the top, right, bro? He's Jokic is there, bro. I'm telling. He's just that good, bro. I've I'm the Lakers fan that watched him destroy us every game, bro. He's just, bro. The same way I f- do you feel about like, all right, close game, end of the game, LeBron James led team, bro. He's gonna get it done. That's Jokic now, bro. Like they're right. not losing them type of games, bro. Like no. I don't know if you remember. I specifically remember this, and I felt it in the moment because he was 100 percent right. It was like a uh going into the fourth quarter interview. With Michael Porter Jr., you know, the little sideline reporters. I know exactly what you're talking about. Dude said, yeah, what do you, something, something, what does it take to get Jokic going to have a good fourth quarter? He said, bro, it's Nikola Jokic. Like, he's going to have a good fourth quarter. He's going to get going. <laughs> and he did it, bro. Like, he's, bro, it's just, it's sometimes you just have to tip your cap, bro. When you when you have those top of the top guys, and in this league, he's at the top of the top, bro, they get it done. And it's like, yeah, you're going to have to face the fact that, bro, LeBron is not the top of the top no more, bro. Like, it's just, it's what he and, and that's not even a bad thing. Cause like you said, he's 39. He's not supposed to be. It's incredible. He's about to make all NBA at this age. Bro, he's not even supposed to be like top 30 right now. And he's already doing that. That's He's supposed he, to be doing his podcast full time. Seriously. Full time. Talking reminiscing about the glory days, bro. Right. Like, Matter of fact. This is what it is. How old? When, when Jordan came back to the Wizards. Bro, at 39, Jordan was Done, I think. Yeah, his last year with the Wizards was 39. Take a you want to know what was his averages? Just give me give me a, a guess. 17 a game. Was it like crazy 17? He, he made an all-star game. He gave 20 a game. That's just like because he's Jordan. Right. 26 and 4 on a Washington Wizards team that went 37 and 45. Yeah, bro. Like everything right now is gravy, bro. Literally everything. This man is about to probably be all NBA second team. You tell me he's one of the, still at age 39, one of the top 10 players in the NBA. I couldn't have said it any better than you did. It really just does boil down to the fact that I think Denver is just a better team. I think they're going to run through every team in the West. I, I literally tweeted out already. I think that when we we're going to preview it here towards the end of the episode, but this series between them and, and them and Minnesota, I think that's essentially the NBA finals. Whoever wins this series, and I have Denver in seven. Winning the finals or going to the finals? I think that is winning the final. I don't care who comes out. If Minnesota pulls it off, they're beating Boston in my eyes. I think that either one of those teams is legitimately that good. And differing style, I think Denver is the best executing offense down the stretch. And I think Minnesota's defense is literally just on another level. Top tier elite. It's which, which is it's a perfect segue because we're about to pivot right into the Sun series, <laughs> um, where Anthony Edwards, as a 22 year old, he's younger than the both of us, bro. Anthony Edwards and the Minnesota Timberwolves swept this 
quote unquote big three. Y'all couldn't, they couldn't give a, a game. Y'all couldn't get one game, bro. Just one. That's all I'm asking. The Lakers got one. I said we got one. Y'all right? got one. <laughs> Y'all, Y'all couldn't. couldn't win one game against this Minnesota team. And I've been waiting genuinely since the series ended. I've been waiting all week. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you kind of, kind of sit back and go your <laughs> go in your rant because you. I can lie. You've had smoke for the Suns since before the playing game. Mm-hmm. No, bro. I think you had smoke for the Suns since like low key, like a little after the All Star break. Because they're frauds, bro. And yeah. I don't know. I can't believe that so many people. And I get it. Like it's predictions. You're going to be right. You're going to be wrong. There's some that I'm going to be wrong on. Some other people are going to be wrong on. I was so confident in the Timberwolves in this series. I've seen so many people who I really, like, I listen to, I respect their basketball opinions. They were confident in the Suns. And I, I didn't see it. I, I, I understood the logic of, like, it's KD, it's D-Book, it's Bradley Beal. They're going to get games. That's how I feel. I think I took Timberwolves in six was my initial six. prediction. Mm-hmm. All for just um, the strength of, te- like, KD, book going right. crazy. Same type of same type of thought process. Like the, the Suns got two off of Denver last year, but that was because right. Devin Booker turned into a freaking my player for two games and <laughs> shot like 85% of <laughs> the field. Um, this is what I'm about to say, bro. And if y'all if y'all are following the Instagram or any of the TikTok, the YouTube, you, you saw the short that I made. This 100 percent and it, 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 I don't know, it hasn't come out yet, but there's already been speculation that Frank Vogel might get the boost. If he gets the boot, it's the most stupid firing in at least a decade, bro. It makes Mm -hmm. no sense. You have genuinely, if you're a Suns fan and you're really trying to figure out, man, what the heck happened to our team? We were so good. We've got all these players. You have nobody to blame but your owner, bro. If you are the owner of a sports franchise, I don't care if it's football, basketball, baseball, pickleball, soccer, (laughs) I don't care what it is, bro. Be the owner. You hire people to run the team because that's their job. You don't need to be doing multiple jobs. Just take your bread. You just drop like four or five billion to buy the team, rake in the cash that comes in and sell it when you're 80 and make a trillion dollars and go ahead and give it to your kids. I don't need you to be calling the Nets owner and trading for Joe Sy and then going to the offseason. You trade for Bradley Bill. You trade away all your good players. And now all of a sudden, y'all are sitting here like, well, we just got swept what in the happened? first round by yeah. the Timberwolves. And then you got the nerve to go into a press conference and talking about, well, if we're being honest, it's only like 20, 26 other teams that wouldn't trade their whole roster for all roster. Pat, you're a fucking liar, bro. You're a liar, bro. You are literally being so delusional right now. And it's so sad for that fan base because if you go back to just 2021, that team was literally – the finals was in their hands. The Bucks had to come back in that series to win that game, to win or to win that series. I mean, and y'all are now in a position where you have lost, lost. Y'all got swept in the first round of the playoffs by team who best player is twenty two. Y'all supposed to be this big three, this overwhelming force. Bradley Beal laughing on the sidelines in game three, like it's sweet. It's no urgency out of y'all, bro. <laughs> it's no urgency out of y'all. I don't understand that. He at the podium talking about some. I'll be damned. I never got swept in my career. First of all, you crazy. You play in Washington. You, you play like, like what? Like, right. You've never been in the playoff to be talking about. I ever been swept. <laughs> Then you got swept. You talking about some? Well, I'll be damned. I wonder why. Because you sitting on the bench laughing in game three like something funny, bro. Y'all getting the breaks. If they ever see him (laughs) talking on y'all, bro. In y'all's building doing this. He in Phoenix. (laughs) Bro, I cannot, I cannot stress this enough. You it's no I don't a hundred percent put a hundred percent of the blame on Matt Ishbia, bro. You cannot put anything else any I don't care what Frank Vogel had to do. Well, he literally said he wanted a point guard. We talked like mad times on this podcast about the fact that Devin Booker is one of at at the time the best shooting guard in the NBA. He might have got that snatched from him this series. And right. Edward said, Give me that. 
We talking about this dude, one of the best shooting guards in the NBA. Y'all traded with Chris Paul and was like, who needs a point guard? We'll just have Devin Booker do it. Frank Vogel said, I kind of would prefer if we had a point guard. Mm -hmm. The front office said no to the head coach that y'all brought in for this this season. You telling me y'all hired him in the offseason and then in that same offseason traded away Chris Paul. And then he was like, you know, I get it. We brought in Bradley Beal, but can we like, can we get a point guard? Just one. And y'all just said no. And then now y'all get swept in the first round. Y'all going to be like, man, Frank Vogel, you suck, bro. You should get out of here. <laughs> y'all gave him no defenders to work with, knowing that he's a defensive-minded head coach. What was he going to do? He going to play bowl bowl? Bowl bowl game played off the floor in the first round. He has no business being on the floor in that series. What is bowl bowl going to do? He has right. nobody to work with, bro. <laughs> Grayson Allen, Grayson Allen might have been a genuinely their best defender. He rolled his ankles. It didn't matter, bro. There's nobody else guarding anybody on his team. Anthony Edwards getting wherever he want. Cat getting wherever he want. Rudy Gobert is bullying y'all down low. Y'all are a soft basketball team and a bad run organization now that y'all owner want to come in and become the freaking GM on top of it, bro. If you're the owner, be an owner. Let the GM be the GM. Now you're in a position where y'all don't even own y'all owns draft pick until 2031. And you're talking about you're going to trade it this offseason to get better. What are we doing? Like, genuinely, what are we talking about? If I was a Suns fan, yo, I would start a petition or something. He's He's got to go. I couldn't do it. I would be losing my mind right now. Yeah. <laughs> I can't with them, bro. Like, it's... And it felt like it was so obvious the whole season. Like, I promise y'all, I'm really not trying to be the guy to, like, take a parade right now to be like, oh, man, the Suns, we, I told you so. But it's like, bro, y'all could watch the games. The defense is bad. The offense isn't good. KD and D-Book just got hot sometimes. But they're not doing anything to really – Spring them open. There's no actions. There's no motion. There's no chemistry between everybody on the floor. It's literally ISO, ISO, ISO. And what happened in the playoffs? Jaden McDaniels is putting Devin Booker in a fucking straight jacket, bro. He can't get nothing off. Kevin Durant is getting bodied. Nurkic is getting bullied. Nurkic was getting bullied when they went big, and then they went small, and Nurkic can't play. You can't play when they're big. You can't play when they're small. When can you play? And it's who you traded in for. Like, I, it doesn't compute in my brain, bro. It doesn't compute at all. But this is this is what they thought they needed to do. They had to get a big three. They just had to have the big three, bro. So y'all made y'all bed. Y'all got a lie. I, I literally couldn't have said it any better myself. Like, quite literally. And, well, I mean, we said it before. Like, bro, I, I guarantee if you go back to look at the first pod we've ever did. Not ever did. The first pod after they made the Bradley Beal trade. We literally said, why? Like, it's just, that's a little, that's overkill. Like, you didn't need another score. Like, that's not what was needed. You didn't, especially going from the series last year where you're like, Kevin Durant, oh, he's killing him. Devin Booker is like the greatest in the world right now. Why would you look at that and be like, yeah, you know what we need? Bradley Beal, some more scoring. Let's get rid of our point guard. In, in general, the problem is, like you said, the roster construction. I'm not going to go too deep into it because you literally hit on everything. Firing Frank Vogel, like you said, would be the dumbest thing in the world. I put, what, I literally, what I literally put zero money. Like, I, I literally, done, I, I quite, I, like, I couldn't put like less of the blame on Frank Vogel. Like, there's absolutely nothing he could have done. The fact that I think the icing on the cake was the fact that he said, I want a point guard, and Yas said no. No. <laughs> and it's crazy because all of these reports came, it felt like, bro, as soon as the game four ended and they were officially swept, like 20, 30 minutes later, here come a Shams tweet, here come a mm. Woj tweet. And it's like, Players are in the after. Remember when they got bust by the Clippers and it was like 30 to one, 30 to like nine yeah, after the first uh -huh. quarter? They said at halftime, Frank Vogel started yelling at them and they said one player had to hold back his laughter. Y'all childish, bro. This is not a serious organization because nah. you know what that means? That means that Shams or Wolge or somebody has known that for weeks, months mm -hmm. since that's happened, bro. He's just been sitting on it, waiting to report it. That is corny. 
y'all are corny. Y'all are not serious. Y'all are not really trying to actually win a championship if that's the type of mentality you have. Because y'all should be embarrassed because Frank Vogel is trying to be an actual coach and get on y'all, actually try to get y'all to perform because y'all are getting blown out by 30 in the first quarter to a Clippers team that I don't even think they had Kawhi that game. And even they did, who cares? Y'all should not be getting – no NBA team should be down by 30 in the first quarter. Point blank, period. does not matter who it is. If you put an NBA team against a college team, I don't know if they'd be down by 30 in the first quarter. Like, come on, bro. That's that's purely an effort thing. That's a want to. You can't want to be getting bust like that. But if y'all don't care like that, then y'all don't care like that, bro. Yeah, it's a smash it Matt HPA, bro. Like the the owner that just like I right, bought the team. I'm gonna be completely hands on. I think I know more basketball than everyone. That's the biggest problem, bro. You're an owner. Then the, the people that's been in the you know they work their whole lives to just right. get into the front office position. Just because you, you just, have you just, you're you a real money. estate guy. Yeah, you have money and you watch some NBA and you probably play some 2K or something, bro. Now, that's he, the only explanation. He played for, for Tom Izzo at Michigan State. He was a D1 college basketball player. Not that good enough to go to the NBA, but, you know, he played D1. That doesn't – that means nothing. to me. There's NBA players who I don't think no ball, bro. Like, that literally played oh, yeah. the NBA that I don't think no ball. So, mm-hmm. that, that means nothing to me. So, yeah, it's it, to me, like I said, literally 100% is on the ownership. All Matt it should be a career – NCAA D1 stats at Michigan State, he averaged 1.1 points per game, 0.2 rebounds, 0.2 assists, 50% from the field. He played in 13 games, averaged 3.1 minutes per game. And you're going to sit here and tell me, you're going to sit here and tell me that you know more about basketball than I'm pretty sure the Suns GM is James Jones, who was with LeBron for all those years, all those finals runs that he made. He put together the team in Phoenix that made the fucking finals and mm-hmm. you're gonna hop in and just now nah, bro i got this i'm gonna talk to joe myself i'm gonna call no, you i'll do it myself like bro what are you that's what really about, gets bro? me you went out of your way to call him yourself and get the deal done you literally have a gm i feel like i'm getting ptsd from being a cowboys fan all these years and having jerry jones be the that's owner what it feels like like no that's you legitimately can't do what both. Feels you like. genuinely can't do both bro it's so rare that you have people that can pull off multiple roles. One of the only people that's really done that with any type of success is actually Mark Cuban in Dallas, and they have a ring to show for it. Um, But it's like, it's just such an anomaly. If you look across every league, very rarely do you have owners who get involved in the sport itself. When you look at somebody like David Tepper in Carolina with the Panthers, you see how bad that organization is right now. A lot of that has to do with the fact that he just can't stop and just be an owner. He's got to be hands-on with who they're taking. And that's why they ended up with Bryce Young. And now they're, he's coming out with these weird comments about, you know, that's what they wanted to do. And he just can't let the people who actually scout and that's their job. They're literally paid like every two weeks to be a scout, to be a GM. He just won't let them do their job. He has to be the guy. Jerry Jones just can't be the owner. He's got to be the head of the football operations. Y'all don't need to be doing both, bro. Literally, if I know your name as an owner, it's either a great thing, meaning like a bunch of success, popular, or a terrible thing. Fact. I don't want to know your name. Like you're supposed to be behind the scenes cutting checks, bro. Literally, right it's not like a like obviously if you're like you know like one of these real famous owners or you got a lot of chips, blah, blah blah. That's one thing. If I know your name and y'all haven't had success, that's a problem. Like it, that's it, it, he gets one hundred percent of the blame, bro. Literally, that's, that's all it is. And really, and it's <laughs> the funniest part about everything is the fact that they're like, we're just gonna run it back next year. Yeah, you got no choice, buddy. Yeah. Like what you yeah. you're gonna do? You have the yeah. largest payroll in the nba by almost 15 million that year you're like so far over the second luxury tax apron like i just said they don't even own their own first their own first round pick or their own pick in general i think they have their own 2028 second and their own 2033rd that's it everything else is a pick swap which means they're going to get the worst pick from another team that they traded with they traded four picks specifically from phoenix just to get kevin durant they have nothing to – there's no avenue forward for this team. It's crazy to say as, like, 
limited as the Lakers assets are, the Suns are like 10 times worse. They have nothing to give up, bro. Dudes is really, imagine be a laughing like that 2031 pick is about to do something. That's a child right now. Whoever <laughs> got dropped that is literally, I don't know if he's a teenager yet. Like, that's not funny, bro. You literally mortgage your whole team's future after you bought them. And you're just like, yeah, bro, 26 other teams, you know, 26 other GMs, they would rather be us. I don't, bro, if I was any of the 29 other GMs, I would not in a million years want to be in the position that the Phoenix Suns are in because you're in a position where KD's old, like no way around it. We're seeing her talking about LeBron being 35. 39, KD is 35 or 36. I've rolled his. He's 35, Bradley Bill's 30 with a no trade clause in what, like three years and a uh, freaking billion dollars off of his contract. That's why I just looked up. It's like, bro, you are not getting no better as far as your players, as far as like your stars. They're not getting better. They're actually getting older, so it's going to get worse as time goes on. And they're locked up with a bajillion dollars, especially with Bradley Bill, with a no-trade clause. Bro, it's over. You're running it back, and you're going to be back. Bro, to me, you know what's crazy? Because I, I genuinely feel like as much heat as they're getting, they're not getting enough heat as, as how big of a failure this is, too. Bro, when they no. made when they made the Bradley Bill trade, Bro, people were like, bro, let's just skip the season, bro. We know the Suns are going to be in the finals. Like, right. we just know, bro, it's like another super team. Like, they're so over overpowered. Like, they're definitely going to be in the finals. It's like, might as well just not even play regular season games. Like, their expectations went from like, bro, if y'all don't win the finals, it's a, it's a bust to, okay, like, just compete with, as the season goes on, like, let's just compete with Denver and all them cool, cool, cool. Then it's like, all right, let's not be in the play-in to – let's try not to get swept. Like, bro, it went from here to all the way at the bottom. And it's it – like like I said, it just doesn't get talked uh, talked about enough because no. the expectations were so high coming to the season, and to end like this is abysmal. Yeah. They, y'all, the, this team is in so much of a better spot if they don't make the Kevin Durant chariot, I think. And I think they're in even better of a spot if they don't trade for Bradley Beal. I'm not saying that you don't need to move off of CP3 or Aiton and like other things, but the way that you go about it, that whole whole thought process of like, we can just go out and get another star and get another star. You have three max contract guys and a lot of guys who like, bro, let's just be frank. A lot of these dudes don't need to be in the NBA rotation right now. A lot of dudes that you're being forced to have to play don't need to be in NBA rotation right now. I saw people talking about Drew Eubanks. I don't think Drew Eubanks needs to be in the NBA rotation right now. They thought maybe he could get more minutes. No, I don't. I, every time I've seen him play, I'm like, this dude does not need to be guarding any other NBA big men. Like, it's a lot of people playing on that team right now that have no business playing, and it's the freaking first round of the playoffs. You, like, this is your seven or eight, nine-man rotation. You Bro, have to play these guys. It's honestly crazy because, like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's easy in hindsight to say the Kevin Durant trade was like, don't do that. I don't even think that's the one that killed them. I think they could do the the Kevin Durant trade because, granted, at the time, it's like, bro, it's Kevin Durant. Like, right. It, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have many. I, the Bill one is so. The Bill one. That, I'm going to say that's the one to me that was like, what? Because and I'm thinking, because honestly, going into last offseason with Book and KD. I was at least willing to hear them out if their plan was we're going to still trade Aiden, we're going to trade Chris Paul and all them to get quality role players and just rock with KD and Book. Then I'm like, okay, I'll hear y'all out. Like, that's a at least a solid way to build a team. Once they said, no, scratch that, we're going to get Beal and then just get minimum guys, then I was like, all right, bro, y'all just that, – it's overkill. Y'all don't know what you're doing. It's just poorly run franchise at that point. Yeah. Bradley Beal, this – Playoff series averaged 16 points, four assists, two rebounds, uh, shot 60% the first game, had two games sub 36% from the field. But hey, my HP has said, we, y'all don't need a point guard because we want the ball in those three guys' hands. That that was his reasoning as to why they didn't want a point guard. Like you, when you have those three guys, you don't want the ball out of their hands ever. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, no wins. That, Zero that, wins, by the way. That's how basketball works. <laughs> in y'all's arena bro in y'all's arena we didn't even get to talk about the Timberwolves I don't want to spend a ton of time on it y'all got, got swept by a Rudy Gobert led team bro like, <laughs> y'all got swept by Rudy 
Come All on. All I'm going to say is Anthony Edwards on another level right now, bro. On mm-hmm. another level right now. It was not a soul on that Phoenix Suns roster that could check him. It wasn't nobody that could check Cat either. That mm-hmm. Timberwolves team, their defense, what they were doing. Shout out to Jaden McDaniels. Shout out to Nikhil. Uh, obviously, Rudy as well. Rudy was fantastic on the perimeter as well. Uh, that is why I genuinely feel like that second round series between them and Denver is it might as well be the the what the, the actual NBA Finals. Uh, they are legitimately that good, um, and they're the only team I feel like that matches up with Denver well enough to really put that type of pressure on them. So okay. I tip their cap to them, but. Phoenix, this is a disappointment. It's a shame that y'all are in this position that y'all are in because it shouldn't have to be that way. Nope. Speaking of a shame and really (laughs) more of an embarrassment, let's pivot to this pacers Buck series, which is now wrapped up. Milwaukee was bounced out in six games. Not entirely their fault. Giannis didn't play a single game in the series. Damian Lillard missed i think was a game four and five or just game five i don't remember the top of my head thinking is one uh yeah so then it was game five uh with the uh, the achilles you know injury came back for game six it wasn't enough um i it's an embarrassment for a couple of reasons and i'm gonna start with the biggest ones that, that's really come out today i'm gonna look right to the camera patrick beverly bro you are a clown <laughs> i just unplugged my headphones hold up I cannot believe that he really sat there and threw the ball at a fan's head because y'all down by 20. I don't genuinely, bro. I really could care less what the fan said to you, bro. It's wild because of all people to be commenting on this. I saw Draymond talking about it. <laughs> and he was, but he made a valid point. He was like, this is really the closest thing you're going to get. To jumping in the stands and fighting a fan. Yeah, you just do right. a basketball at a at a woman's head in the crowd. Then got I don't even know whoever buddy is that threw the ball back at him to give him the ball back. What are you doing, bro? Are you stupid? Threw the ball back at Patrick Beverly and then Pat Bev threw the ball at his face. Off the strength of that, you genuinely might be looking at a lengthy suspension suspension from the NBA. Adam Silver is going to have to handle that. One. Two, then you go into the locker room after the game. Y'all just got bounced out of the playoffs. And a, a, a reporter from ESPN, who's I think they said that she's one of their more longtime producers, all she's doing is standing there like every other person in the media is with her microphone, just trying to hear your answer. You turn to her and ask her if she subscribed to your podcast. She laughed it off, said no. She keep trying to just go. On. Again, she's not even talking. She didn't ask the question. She's just sitting there with the mic. Then you swipe the mic down like she can't get the audio. Then you literally stopped your answer to say, can you please leave? I'm being dead serious. Like, you're not subscribed to my podcast. I don't want to talk to you. Bro, grow up, bro. You've been on six teams in two years. I'm not going to go crazy because if y'all want to see somebody go crazy, go watch Nick Wright talk about what, what about Pat Bev. These last, whatever, his whole, he really went off of him his whole NBA career because he really tweaked starting all the way from his time in Houston up until now. He been had smoke for Pat Bev, so he, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't see it, but I bet, yeah. If y'all haven't seen it, go watch it. It's three minutes, and it's a body, bro. Caught him bad. Because it's facts. Like, the way that you just acted at the end of that game is unexcusable. The way that this Buck season really played out, I can't say I'm surprised. Again, it's hard to pinpoint the blame onto one person because more than anything, you would want to have Giannis in this series. The series is entirely different if Giannis plays, but at the end of the day, he wasn't able to play. And the Indiana Pacers are now going into the second round after a very big game six win against Milwaukee. Um, But yeah, what do you, how are you feeling about this particular series? What do you think this means for the Bucks moving forward? I saw a report that they're talking about Giannis is when his deal is up and he was like, you know, he's going to have to assess a lot of things, a little nugget of maybe uncertainty with Milwaukee and how things have played out. So, so how are you feeling about the bucks right now? I mean, honestly, I, to me, when it comes to the bucks, it's don't get me wrong. 
you can kind of predict and think that look the just off the way we were playing with Giannis. Granted, I think with Giannis they like they win this series, but like it, they can kind of predict and say like look, we probably weren't gonna win a championship based off of the way we were playing. Hundred percent. But even then, though, you still would never know because, like, you did, like you didn't have Gian, like you've never seen Giannis and Dame together in the playoffs. Because granted, the playoffs is a different story. You know what I mean? Experience plays a big factor. IQ plays a big factor. Things like that. But so I, I just don't think that you should overreact and do something like drastic. Like I think I'm seeing people like yeah, should trade Dame and blow it. Like don't overreact in that aspect. Yeah, that's just that to me that just be dumb. It to me it depends on. I don't really know their ass. I don't know like their situation as far as being able to bring in more talent as far as like role players and better defenders and quality pieces around them. Cause I still feel like um like Damon Giannis can work for sure with a quality oh, yeah. roster around him. So from that aspect, I don't think that it's means to overreact because we were just talking about like the Lakers and when they got bounced from the first round because of an injury, what did they do? They was like mm-hmm. they hit and was like we need Russell Westbrook. And that ultimately was a failure that led to other years of just a little bit of struggle because of that. So, again, don't overreact because you got bounced in the first round because your literal best player who has an argument to be like one of, if not the best players in the planet, did not play a single game. You shouldn't overreact and do anything drastic. So, to me, when it comes to the Bucks, like I said, it really depends on the amount of quality pieces they can bring around them. Uh, mostly defenders they can add to that roster um, and then go from there. So I wouldn't be opposed to tr- going that route and then obviously running it back and see what you could do. As far as – honestly, as far as, like, Giannis is, like – I don't even know how to put it. Like, his willingness to stay, his mood, I guess you could put it. Like, bro, what do you – bro, they got you, Damian Lillard. Like, they got you – the coach that you approved – then I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have fired the coach that had a winning, a second best record in the East if you didn't approve of it. So like, bro, they're no. doing what, they're doing what you said. They, you literally have them in the palm of your hand because they would do whatever you say, and they're mm-hmm. complying like they're doing that. So to you to be like, I'm don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that he is actually like this, but if this if the reports and like the rumors stuff are true that he's like kind of disgruntled a little bit, that would just be dumb because they're doing everything you asked for, bro. Like. Literally everything. And if you are actually, you know, disgruntled a little bit and you're mad that you didn't even get a fair shake with, like, your new, like, superstar teammate, like, that would – to me, that would just be dumb because they're – it's not like a situation where you want to win the GM and everybody's – they're not making enough moves. They're not, you know, listening to you. They're not bringing in the right people. Like, bro, they're doing everything that you signed off on, and if y'all don't win – that's on y'all, bro. Like, I don't know what else to tell you, bro. They're doing what you say. So, I don't know. Because you can't even, like, to me, like I said, you can't even blame the midseason coach firing because I guarantee you they don't fire the coach if Yada doesn't say, yeah, you can fire mm-hmm. the coach. So, is what it is. Yeah, he said that he wasn't He wasn't even close to making a return. It wouldn't even have mattered if they would have won game six. That He was not playing game seven. He probably would have missed time in the next series if they were able to, to win game six and a game seven in this one. It's unfortunate that like this team can't not make that run without Giannis point blank. Like you just are not going to expect that out of a the Bucks team built this way. Um, I, I think that they, like you said, I think Dame and Giannis can definitely work. I think the flashes were there. I think early on in this series, you saw Damian Lillard even being by himself. He went, well, he had 35 in that, that first, first, first half. half. He's talking to the crowds almost when this, which I brought me here for it. it the pieces are there. I, like I, you summed it up perfectly. How the the Lakers responded by going out and panicking and getting Westbrook—that's not what the Bucks should be doing. This is still a very good core. There are tweaks that need to be made around the edges to shore up the defense. I think um, potentially bring in a couple other guys who can maybe provide some self creation. I think Malik Beasley is probably out of there because of the year that he has. Somebody's going to toss him a nice little bag. Mm-hmm. Um, to you know, be a three and D guy on their team. So there, there's moves to be made for them. They're in a significantly better spot than a lot of the other teams that have gotten bounced out in the first round. But more than anything, it's really just unfortunate that you know Giannis caught this injury right before the playoffs, and 
you know, yeah, you do have to tip your cap to, you know, this Pacers team and, and Siakam as well, who I, I think really is, is the best Pacer in this series, um, especially in those first couple of games. He was – nobody could really hold him at all. Um, Tyree started to get a little bit more aggressive towards the end um, in this series. Um, TJ McConnell in this last game came off the bench and provided like 20 plus points as well for him. So it was an all around team effort um, for Indiana. So look, you tip your cap there, but for Milwaukee, it's going to be a, an off season where there are moves definitely to be made to shore up this roster, but not, I don't think there's a good avenue for them if they look to try to really like reset or blow it up. Cause that's not going to lead to to good things. No, not at all. I don't think that's the path they should go down. Just definitely, like I said, to improve the roster as much as you can on the margins, not anything huge, and then go from there and give it a fair shake with yeah. non injuries. Definitely. Um, finally, now getting to the games from last night on Thursday, uh, two different series ended, uh, and the first one that I want to talk about. Well, actually, let's just get this one out of the way. Miami Heat. Uh, bounced out in five games. You surprised? Shocked, bro. Well, who would have thought? No. <laughs> I was surprised they won the fifth game. <laughs> I was about to say, I was surprised they won one. I was surprised. But then again, they had to shoot like the greatest team ever. So anything. Do you they know might win that, but... they made more threes in game two that they won than they did through games three through five? Seriously? I, that's, I didn't know that, but. I mean, they struggle to score the ball. So when you say it, it's like, okay. So, but they 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 struggle to score the ball. Bro. Yeah. Half but, court but, offense was abysmal. Bro, Jimmy said, don't let them get one, though. They got one. Don't let they them get one. one. <laughs> Give them the trophy. They got one. I hate Jimmy Butler, bro. I'm not going to lie. Jimmy Butler pisses me off, bro. Hey, he really report, does. Reports coming out. His time in Miami might be reaching an end. That's oh. what the streets is saying. Bro, I really don't care, bro. Like, Jimmy Butler really pisses me off, bro. Because Jimmy's, I, I'm like, Jimmy's so annoying from the not playing in the regular, not playing hard in the regular season thing. I don't care about, bro. The dude, when what really got me was when he was like, if I get inducted to the Hall of Fame, I'm not even going to go. Like, that's not really what I'm worried about. Like, bro, shut up. Like, you go, go. Like, shut up, bro. You try to be too cool. You're too cool for the Hall of Fame, bro. You telling me you too, bro, you're like, like the C tier Hall of Famer, you telling me you too cool for the Hall of Fame? <laughs> what are we talking about, bro? I did, bro, I hate Jimmy Butler. Bro, I swear to God, yeah, whatever. I don't, don't want to spend too much time. Right, I don't even want to. Like we've all, we're already an hour deep. Yeah, <laughs> we took a collective bro. forty minutes to cook the Lakers in the sun. <laughs> we did. <laughs> um, but yeah, Boston moves on in five. The Chris Apps injury, there is some level of concern. Um, they are now going on to play the Cavs um, and the Cavs. Or, yeah, whoever wins this this Cavs uh, Orlando series, I take Celtics pretty confidently against either of those teams. They're going to roll all the way into the Eastern Conference Finals, I'm pretty sure. But Chris F's injury is one to definitely keep an eye on. The other game from last night, and what I think is genuinely going to go down as one of the best first-round series ever, Philly – and New York. Two things about this series. Well, obviously on court, the series was fantastic. But the crowd, both crowds, Philly or Madison Square Garden, electric in every single game. It was amazing. Bro, they was turning Philly into Madison Square Garden too. You got Knicks fans packing out the Wells Fargo Center. Sixers fans in Madison Square. It just was perfect. It was great energy from the crowd, and it amplified mm-hmm. every single game. But I do have something here for you. Right, and you go first. You go first. You like you about to say something. No, I was just going to say the fact that it was like it was so perfect from the standpoint of like you have Philly fans and you have New York fans. The then v- you have like – but the, but like – it fit the teams because, like, you have yeah. a scrappy, like, Tibbs New York team and then a Philly team that's, like, st- they, you know what I'm saying? They got some fight to them, too. Like, it was just perfect right. as far as, like, just atmosphere. That's all I had to say. No, 100%. You got – and, look, I'm going to start this whole little analysis with this. I'm going to tip my cap. Joel B off of a knee injury, mm-hmm. playing with Bell's palsy, which if y'all know what that is, like – 
the nerves in your face start tweaking out. Half your face is not operating on the same wavelength as the other one. Wild stuff. For him to go out and have the series that he did in this one, 100% credit to him. He had a fantastic series playing hurt. Makes you even wonder more what it would be like if he could have been really healthy in the series. And, you know, we've been guys who were critical of Embiid last year, um, critical of Embiid genuinely at times in the playoffs. This is a great series from him, no matter the outcome. So I wanted to start there. But I have something something here to share with you. It's actually a phone number, 215-686-3280. Do you know what that phone number is? I don't. I'm curious. That is the phone number for the police chief in Philadelphia because I have a robbery to report. <laughs> Tobias Harris has just stolen $150 million from the Philadelphia <laughs> organization. I was wondering where this was going. <laughs> do you know how many points he scored last night? Oh, I do. I do. The same amount as me and you. Right. <laughs> me, Billy, Dane. We had the same amount of points. As a hundred fifty million dollar NBA player, we were more efficient so too. We were, we were way more efficient too. <laughs> I have never been more disgusted by Tobias Harris's play in a 76ers uniform than this series. And I know people have gone on him in the past. I've always thought it was like, hee hee ha ha, it's a little funny. Like, I get it, you know. He was the third option, and then he was the fourth option, and then he came back to being the third option when after Jimmy left, and it was like, cool. But, like, this was disgusting, bro. <laughs> like, if, <we're, laughs> if I'm being 100% honest, let me pull up his, like, full stats from this playoffs. Obviously, in this last game, I think he only shot two shots. Um, shot one. I thought he shot one. He got two. <laughs> Oh, he did? No. To, Nine points, seven rebounds, one assist. He shot 43% from the field, 33% from three. Played 36 minutes a night and gave you nine points, getting a $150 million contract. Um, there was a point in last night's game on a fast break, one-on-one. Could you take a wild guess at who the defender was that made Tobias Harris dribble out of the paint? <laughs> I don't remember the play you talk about. Jalen Brunson is underneath <laughs> the rim, and Tobias Harris – that ass turned and dribbled out of the paint. Bro, he's his game is so ugly. His game is just not good, bro. It's I'm gonna not. say it again. If y'all really want to call 215 686 3280, the Philadelphia police commissioner, a robbery has occurred in Philly, bro. 150 M's. Bad. Bad, bro. It's crazy, bro. Like, he just gave you nothing. He literally just gave you nothing, bro. Just a waste of it's not a even player. An exaggeration. Like actually, gave you, actually he, zero points. Bro. He literally gave you nothing, bro. It was just a waste of a player on the court, which is like I said, I, I agree with you with the fact that like sometimes it's it's more like a funny joke, but like, bro, legitimately, like, bro, what does he bring to the table that helps you win games? Like it's nothing. Like there's absolutely nothing. Yeah, last night, 29 minutes. He's a minus 10. Obviously, like I said, over two from the field, zero points. He had four rebounds and three assists. That was it. He just is not making a huge impact defensively. He's not attacking anything offensively. Nine points in a series. Like, you genuinely, when I look at the 76ers roster, obviously, and beat him, Max, he played better than him. Uh, Kyle Lowry played better than him. Kelly Oubre played better than him. Nick Batum played better than him. There's an argument to be made that campaign played better than him. Buddy Heald in this last game 100% played better than him. Seven. Seven players. This guy's making 150 M's. 150 mil. Nine-figure deal. He can't be your eighth best player. That is unbelievable. And to go back to Joel Embiid, I'm glad that I just reminded myself. Let me make sure I pull it up to have have it 100% accurate. But um, there is a stat going around right now from this series. Joel Embiid, when he was on the court, the Sixers had a plus eight net rating in 248 minutes. In the just 45 minutes, he was not on the court in this series. You know, you want to take a guess at what the Sixers net rating was? 
I'm gonna be wrong. What is? I'll it? tell you, it's negative. I, yeah, you know yeah it's no, negative. I know it's negative for sure. Just how, how negative? Just take a guess. Twenty minus fifty point seven. Damn. Their offensive rating when he's on the court is 124.8. When he was off the court, it was 78.8. When he was on the court, their defensive rating was a 116.5. When he was off the court, it was almost 130, 14 points higher. Bro, it's crazy. <laughs> What's even sicker is if you add up the points from all the games, the I Knicks peed, scored yeah. <laughs> one yeah. more point. This man, Joel Embiid, had a 50-point net rating difference when he was on or off, or when he was on the court versus off the court in a series that was decided by one point. But your third best player, making $150 million a year, he couldn't give you one point. <laughs> he gave you no points. <laughs> bro, you can't make this up, bro. All jokes aside, to get to some... Quick actual analysis. Um, Jalen Brunson, after his slow start that we talked about in this series, phenomenal. Fuck phenomenal bro. in these last couple of games. At legitimately scoring at all three levels at, at at scoring at all three levels at a high level, getting to the paint, getting the floater going, getting his uh, you know, getting himself really buckets ball. around the rim. The mid-range is crazy. His ability to put people in jail when he's able to get people on his hip or behind him. Yes, bro. He, he, people want to complain about the foul bait, and they're playing the freaking 76 bro. Say, bro. Come on. We're not doing he, that. We're not he, doing that against this team. Him, not against this team. We're not doing that, bro. I'm not right. it. Well, his ability to get people on his hip, and there was one late where you want to complain, was or wasn't a foul, he made the shot anyway. And he missed the free throw. So, either way, <laughs> right. he's going to get two points. Um, Josh Hart. Bro, is like, he Josh Hart? Is he like, is he like the Kobe Bryant of Derek White's? He might not be Derek White, but he like he right there. He's bro. the Kobe Bryant of Derek. Bro, listen, I just want to know what does he do for conditioning, bro? Like this guy does not get tired, bro. These dudes, the whole Knicks team in general, but Josh Hart does not get tired, but he's always, bro. It's always the minutes, and it's always a hundred and twenty percent crashing for every rebound, hustling. Yeah. Like, bro, I don't know. Like, I don't get it, bro. I would get it. I I would like literally die to have this Josh Hart back on the Lakers, bro. I swear, like <laughs> he is a menace, bro. It's he, insane. It, he's averaging seventeen point twelve point three rebounds as a guard. Bro. He's like he's six a four. Guard. He's not, bro. He's not tall at all. It's literally just hustle and like energy and want to bro like he's he's a legitimate rebounding option it's not like all right he's gonna cry he's gonna get a few boards no bro like he's bro the amount of times that the in the whole series the knicks just had like possessions that really didn't go anywhere but they got so many offensive rebounds oh, yeah. and ended up making the shot is insane bro that was like the whole series that i feel like that happened Majority of the plays, no, every that's one hundred percent one of the tipping points. Even in, like in every single game that they've won, um, but even especially in this last game, like not just timely offensive rebounds. Like in total, they only had four more offensive rebounds and two more total rebounds in the seventy six. It didn't feel like it, right? It's the ones that they get. It's the Mitchell Robinson is slapping it out to Divincenzo who knocks down a three. Right, in the yeah. crowd. like we're they're in Philly, and you have the Knicks fans going crazy. Like that type of momentum means so much more. Uh, but was, like you said, continuously in this series, Josh Hart on the offensive and defensive glass was out of this world. Mitchell Robinson played great. Harnstein played great. D Vincenzo, I seen Knicks fans start calling him three Vincenzo. Boy was knocking it down. Miles McBride, legit. I, like he is making the the Quinn Grimes trade look ten times better. Because he was able to step in on a significantly smaller contract and fill that same type of void that that Quinn Grimes was filling for the Knicks. Um, this Knicks team, I have them going all the way to the conference finals. I'm just as confident in that pick now coming out of this first round than I was when the playoff started. Um, even with the additional injuries that they've sustained, you know, Bogdanovich went down, but Ananobi stepped up, big poster. Banged on MB. Mm -hmm. um, he had a huge game six, huge shots, great defense. Their team is just. It's a tips team, bro. It's a New York team. It fits their identity so, so well. 
they're so connected. They, they're so connected on the defensive side of the ball. It's beautiful to watch. The, the way that guys will really put their body on the line for one another, guys will make that rotation for another person to know because it's like if I'm weak side and I'm, I'm, I'm making that do or die closeout, you're going to drop for me. You're going to be there. Like they're just so all in sync. It's beautiful, beautiful to watch. So credit New York, credit uh, this this Tibbs team. Maxi had a phenomenal, phenomenal series. We can't go without talking about what he did in game man. five because it should have been a five game series, if we're being honest. Lit, bro, man, I tell you one thing. If we ain't hit on anything, we hit on the breakout players that episode. Because mm -hmm. Ant between Anthony Edwards and Tyrese Maxey, bro. I think we both said it like it's crazy because we were like, yo, in the playoffs, even though we ha I not have no proof, don't worry, he had good playoff games before. But even though it's not like we've never had proof of him being a second option and being able to take over playoff games, we're like, yeah, we got confidence in Maxey. <laughs> we, we were right, bro. Like, this, bro, the shot from the logo, because Grant already the shot to the four point play was crazy. Ridiculous the confidence to pull that shot from the low. My bro. jaw dropped. I was like, I literally was like, I, I had a he didn't even have to shoot it. It's like nine seconds left. <laughs> I had a baby in my arms, so I couldn't. I was literally like, oh my god, like bro, it was insane. It was literally insane because it, yeah, but I say he had plenty of time to actually get a different shot into and it was cash too. It wasn't like backboard, no, it was cash, bro. Mm -hmm. I legit took over that game in general. Um, so yeah, credit, like I said, credit to him. He played a fantastic game, but or played fantastic series. But I, I do feel like, and this goes back to what you were saying about Embiid. I, I truly wish he was fully, fully healthy. Yeah. Because I, I genuinely think that this was the year, bro, like that he would make it past the second round. Because we've seen it with even him. Maybe it was the fact that, you know, they didn't really have much expectation because he was hurt. But like, regardless, I don't care what the story is. With the bum knee and everything going on, he played a great series. Considering you know the context, I like the role players that they had around him. Now Maxi obviously stepped up. Like I genuinely think that one they wouldn't have had if he didn't get hurt. They wouldn't have had to play this next team in the first round. 100%. But also, I, I think that they would have made it to the conference finals this year. I think that this would have finally been the year. Do they like make it past Boston? Whoever make it to the finals, Maybe who not. knows? But I at least would have liked to see him get that monkey off his back yeah. to the point where they're not like, all right, you can never made it past the second round. Yeah. And I don't like people still like giving him that like like people say oh b can't make it out of the first round like bro like add context to it bro this year was different it's not the same right i so. i feel not that i was ever that type of person to be like ah, you know i'm beat is the a playoff choker but like this series really showcased like throughout all the injuries that he's dealing with right now which is multiple he's still like at i don't know what maybe 60 70 percent of of health He's giving you 35 right. any type of way, all three levels, still being that guy on defense with a, on, a, on one bum knee. He's limping mm -hmm. around the court at times. Like, he, I just need one good – I need one fully healthy playoff. Like, fully. No, like, nagging. No, oh, you get hurt and you hit your face. I don't need nothing. I need a fully healthy MVP level MB playoff run, bro. Yeah. Just one. I just want to see if you can really – because, like, the game, the talent, and, like, the regular season and everything shows me, like, bro, he, there's moments he looks like the best player in the world. <laughs> like, right. it, it, I just need one. I just need one playoff run. I do. Yeah, I, it's – it really goes to show you how much uh, luck goes into being a champion in the NBA. Like, there's genuinely just some level of – Y'all are lucky. Y'all are healthier. Like, it's tough to play 82 games healthy and then go into the playoffs and play 25, 30 more games and not get hurt. It's hard. It's difficult. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a tough offseason for the Sixers. I think, if anything, if you're a Sixers fan, the silver lining and all of this, like you mentioned, bro, Tyrese Max is a bona fide star in this, this league. 100%. So – whatever happens literally with anybody else on this roster, you got a guy in Tyrese Maxey that you can, if it really came to it, you could build around. You could really yeah, build for around. Sure. For sure. I got, I have full confidence in that. hundred um, percent. 
Let's pivot then to the last two series that are still ongoing. Um, the Cleveland-Orlando game is just about to come out of halftime. I have it on this monitor over here. Orlando's up by four. They are obviously need to win this game to force a game seven. I think I picked Orlando in six originally. Um, we mentioned it on the last time, the last episode, that uh, you know they, they were a young team. They looked a little shaky early on. The defense has really come alive uh, for Orlando, as we expected. I think they they up until the last game, game five, um, they had held Cleveland under 100 points in every single game. Mm -hmm. um, Jonathan Isaac has been great. Ben Carroll has been fantastic. Franz Wagner started to find his footing in this series in the last couple of games. He started to shoot a lot better. Um, Hanky actually also have been keeping up with it. Hanky has 18 um, from does. the first half. Yeah. Um, so he's been doing great in this one. Um, Darius Garland also picked up his play in game five, which is, is huge. I've been asking, man, where the heck is he for the last couple of months? So good to see him start to get on, on track a little bit. Uh, so I think this is the, the way that this game is going. It's looking like it's going to probably go into a game seven, which is I, I'm excited to see that because the way this Orlando defense is, I feel like that's a defense that you don't want to see. In a, in a game seven, because they're really mm -hmm. going to throw it all out there, all effort, all energy. But I'm going to pivot it back to you, again, being the residential Lakers fan, because the Clippers have their backs up against the wall. And uh, in a critical game five, in a series where uh, Ty Lu, I think they said he's 5-0 and in series where um, it, it was 2-2. He's never lost his 2-2 series. They go out in game five and get 30-piece. Paul George is uh, having a real up and down this series, to say the least. Man. James Harden, at this point, I think you can almost say he's having a stinker <laughs> of the series. Russell Westbrook is definitely having <laughs> a stinker of the series. Kawhi Leonard dealing with what they're calling knee inflammation. He has missed the last, was it two or three games in this series? Doesn't sound like they're going to rush him back anytime soon. I, even if this goes seven, I don't expect to see Kawhi. Where do the, the Clippers go from here? Because all signs right now genuinely point to them probably being bounced out tonight in this, this game after this, this magic games goes off in game six. Um, where do you go from here? If you're Steve Ballmer, if you're Tyron Lue, if you're Kawhi, if you're Paul George, if you're James Harden, what is next for the little brothers in LA? Well, I'll tell you one thing. If, if it was up to me, yeah, I just keep running it back and keep getting hurt in the playoffs. If it was up to me, I love that. It doesn't hurt me nothing to see that. But realistically, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again, bro. At Please, this point, no. At this point, it's not a maybe this year they can stay healthy. Maybe this year Kawhi can – bro, Kawhi played a bunch of games this year, bro. He played, This is the he? most healthy season since the year he got hurt in San Antonio. And he still couldn't do it. His knees just – bro, his knees are just done, bro. It is what it yeah. is. Unless you – even when you rested for the whole season, he's still not – bro, it's not going to work, bro. And then you're relying on Paul George, who still has his injury problems. But even when he's not injured, like you said, up and down, up and down. You don't know what you're getting. James Harden is the definition of up and down when it comes to the playoffs. Like, it's over, bro. If y'all lose this series, it is over. You can't, like, you just gotta, you gotta start over. Like, I'm, bro, I'm sorry, because I don't want to keep hearing the, when they're healthy, if they're healthy. Sometimes it's, like, legitimate, like, all right, cool. If they're healthy, yeah, they're one of the best teams. If they're healthy, they can make it to the conference finals. They can win the finals, blah, 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 blah. Some situations, bro, it's no if they're healthy. They're not going to be healthy, bro. They're not. The whole season, don't get me wrong. I have a Lakers fan in my – I'm a Clippers fan in my house telling me the whole season you know, when they were playing great, Kawhi and Paul George was playing, they were healthy. I'm like, bro, they're going to – someone's going to get hurt. And it's not me wishing injury. Like I don't want to see nobody injured. But I'm like, bro, somebody's going to get hurt or they're just going to fold. And it was the first one. It's not going to happen, bro. They're not going to be healthy. you got to switch it up. You have to blow it up. You have to stop doing the same thing over and over again because it's not going to work, bro. It's over. So me personally, I love the fact that I get to see a Paul George and James Harden elimination game. Oh, my God. I hope he has the side of the backboard. Oh, that's good. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Oh, my God. Oh, that's going to be – I can't wait till 930, man. I can't wait. 
I I'm just disappointed more than anything, man. It's so I don't get it. I, I genuinely don't get it anymore. Ty Lu is like I think to me he's genuinely like Teflon at this point. I think he's one of the best coaches in the and you NBA. know he's getting scapegoated. You know that they're bro. I'm on like Clippers fan Twitter and they're like Ty, if Ty Lue only knew what he was doing. Excuse me? Yeah. Okay. Like, are you are you are you serious? Listen, I right, put it this way. Put it this way. Put it this way. Say some miracle, Ty Lue does get fired and come to the Lakers head coach. And like say, you know, we lose to Denver next year. And if they start coming from Ty Lue's job, then I would completely admit that, bro. It's just, they're just they're crazy. Everyone's crazy. And they're just, they're just blaming the coach. Because what? You're telling me like legit one of the best coaches in the league. You're telling me like he you're you want his job gone, bro. Like I legitimately see people are like, bro, Tyler don't know what he's doing. We need a different coach in there. Yeah, yeah, I just blame. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. Right. Uh, like so much of this series has been I, I've been super impressed with Gafford and Lively. They've been I, the Clippers don't have an answer for them at the rim right now. They literally turned into Lob City <laughs> for a little bit for real. in some of these games. It just was alley oop after alley oop. Luca was struggling early on. He's definitely dealing with that knee injury that's been, you know, hampering him a bit. But when you go out and you trade for a guy like Kyrie Irving to pair with Luca, Kyrie can keep you afloat, and that's what he did in the you know the first four games of the series. And mm. then in Game Five, Luca had the game. We, you you know Luca's gonna have the game. It's a mm -hmm. matter of when. He goes out, he gives you 35, 10, and 7. Um, and more than anything, I really want to credit both of them, both Luka and Kyrie, just bought in defensively. Not the best yeah. defenders, not the greatest tools, the effort. Sure, the effort is all you can Try. ask for. Right. I'm watching guys slide their feet, active hands, communication. That's all you can ask for out of the guys that you are expecting to carry you on the offensive side of the ball. Come back and just, bro, just work with us. You got PJ, you got Gafford at the rim, you got Lively, you got Derrick Jones, you got Kleba, you got Josh Green, you got a lot of people I just named just crazy. To even think about. It's, like, it's like you got guys who will really like they'll give you everything they got on that side of the ball. We just need we just need something from you. We need you to lead put it. In. You're the leader. We got like bro, like you don't have to be the best friend, but if you're showing effort in defensive end, that's contagious, bro. Just lead. 100 So yeah, I look, I picked the Mavericks in this series to win. I genuinely think the series wraps up tonight in, in game six. I think that getting dropped 30, getting losing by 30 on your home court in a pivotal game five, that's it, bro. That's it. They're going back to Dallas. It's game six to get them to the next round. Pack it up, bro. It's over. Pack it up. And it's over. It's, it's tough. I really don't know where the Clippers go from here. Um, I saw a report came out today that the Clippers are really want Ty Lue to sign his extension. If I'm him, I'm straight, bro. I'm good. I'm off this entirely, bro. It's been so much that he's had to put up with, so much he had to deal with, managing the egos that he's had to deal with, managing the injuries, managing the low management. I, bro, if I'm him, I'm I'm gone, bro. I'm good. If I'm him, I would rather take the Lakers shot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come home. Come to the real LA. Um, but – I just I, I don't I wouldn't want to do it. unless they put some ridiculous bag in front of him, put that Monty Williams cash in front of him, that 80 million in front of him. It's not worth it to me. And that's that's me. I might be different. Ty Lue might think differently, but I just don't see a, a reason to do it because I like I said, I Ty Lue to me, no matter what happens in the series, it's like a top five coach in the NBA. And when it comes to the playoffs, he, he's like top three, top two. The adjustments mm -hmm. that he's made that we've seen from him with undermanned rosters year in and year out, be able to push teams all the way to the brink, be able to bring this Clippers team to a conference finals, missing some of its key players. He's like that. He's like up there with Spo and just the ability to maximize just the players that's available to him, even without, you know, fully healthy rosters. So mm -hmm. it's tough. I, I really don't know where they go from here. I know it's hard because – you know, they're opening up a new arena and you don't want to have a new arena with a bad team. So I'm sure they're going to probably make a move that might not be in the best long-term interest of well, our design, didn't he? Yeah, no, he's he's there. PG yeah. is the one that's not locked in. Um, I don't know about Harden either. And then, again, Ty Lu is also up for an extension. So there's a lot of possible changes um, that could come for, for the Clippers. But 
we're going to see. It's going to be very, very interesting that offseason in L.A. 100%. The last big series that I want to talk about is really want to preview this Nuggets Timberwolves series. We could probably go on for a long time trying to preview all of them, but we're just not going to sit here and do a three-hour episode. (laughs) (laughs) But I really do want to talk about this Nuggets Timberwolves series because it does start tomorrow on Saturday, which is probably the day that y'all are listening or watching this episode. Um, I, my official pick just right out in front of it, I'm taking the Nuggets in seven. That's what I picked previously before the playoff playoff started. I'm not going to waver now. Um, but like I've said a couple times here, I think that the, the Timberwolves match up better than anybody else in the East or the Western conference, um, to Denver. And that's mainly because they have so many quality bigs that they can do a lot of different things defensively on Jokic. They can do a lot off of Jokic in terms of trying to defend guys like MPJ or Jamal Murray from being able to get, you know, their shot going and get hot and really stymie this Denver offense probably better than anybody else in the NBA can. Um, So I'm just genuinely interested to see what Chris Finch, who get well soon after obviously tearing his, I think it was his patella tendon on a freak play on the sideline. Um, it's crazy to have your coach go down with an injury crazy. in the playoffs. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I, I think the Timberwolves match up super well. I think that they're going to probably present the biggest biggest challenge that we've seen and, and will see to Denver in the past two seasons um, in either postseason. But but ultimately, like you've mentioned earlier on the podcast, like Jokic is Jokic, man. I just – down the stretch, the execution is – it doesn't get – better than that he finds the best shots every time whether that's him or teammate jamal murray is freaking michael jordan come to the playoffs (laughs) it's like you just he's the greatest player i've ever seen in my life in the playoffs bro it's hard for me to want to to bet against them and their defense on the same token like we we talked about you know multiple times here minnesota struggles in the half court Uh, obviously it's better now that Cavs back and healthy Um, but even when he was it's still not up to the level of some of the top teams in the NBA. Denver's defense plays at a high level. They're another team that plays great for one another. They have the individual contributors to be able to really try to lock out certain guys between Aaron Gordon and and KCP and Christian Brown and Payne Watson and guys like that. So I think this will be a dog fight, dog fight of the series, but I do have the Nuggets in seven. (sighs) I wish I had the balls to pick the Bulls, bro. I really do. I really, really do. Because I really kind of want to. <laughs> but I think that there's I think that there's steps to the NBA, right? I think mm-hmm. you don't, most of the time, right? Obviously, there's some anomalies. But most of the time, you don't. The step, all right, cool. You get into the league. You know what I'm saying? You suck. And then you get to the point, you go big baby steps. And you, okay, you make the playoffs. Cool. Then you probably just get bounced. Then you know, okay, you make some improvements. This is the Timberwolves, by the way. You make some improvements. You say you're like a, a good team in the regular season. You get to the playoffs. You probably went around. Then you probably lose to the actual, you know, contending level teams like the Nuggets. Then after that, then it's like, okay, cool. If you keep on that trajectory, now you're really in talks of like winning the championship as far as like Anthony Edwards and the Wolves and things like that. I think they're on that second to last one where great regular season, mm-hmm. good, great team. Like they're a really good team. But I think that, like, Denver is just experience, best player in the world. Yeah. At the end of the day, you don't bet against that. You're, You're running just, into it's, them it's at the simple. wrong time. As I say, it's just really just that simple, bro. Because if we're talking about just, you know, matchup-wise and, like I said, who's going to give them the best problem or the biggest problem, the, yeah, the, I think this will be their hardest test in the whole playoffs, as far as just defensively, who will be able to match up with them, things like that, especially in the West, for sure in the West, not even close. Mm-hmm. But I just think overall, it's like, I'm not going to bet against Jokic. I'm just not, bro. It's it's really that simple, bro. Until I get proven otherwise, it's like, like I said, it's like watching like LeBron. Like, unless you build a freaking God squad, 2018 Warriors against them, bro, I'm not betting on you against Jokic. I'm not doing it. I can trust Jamal Murray in the playoffs, even in games where he's not playing well or series, just like the times where he's not playing well, he's going to step it up or at least in the fourth quarter, he's going to come through. So I'm, I'm honestly, I'm just not betting against that, even though I trust the Minnesota defense. I just think the Nuggets have the experience and the, you know, the, the ability to pull it off. So I got Denver in seven. Yeah, we, we fully align. Um, uh, 
that Jackson just put a graphic up. Kyrie Irving is is twelve and zero in closeout games in his career. Uh, so yeah, yeah, definitely feel like it's cooked. <laughs> <laughs> the Clippers. Um, I'm really interested to see who Mike Malone starts the series out on Anthony Edwards because he's gotten so hot coming off KCP. the Phoenix series. That's what I feel like it has to be because get uh, Aaron Gordon got a guard cat. That's what I was saying. I think in a in a perfect world without Kyrie, you would want to put Aaron Gordon on him, have the size, really try to to muck things up there. But right, it's just you're gonna get burnt with like Cat was giving KD trouble. KD's he, just a foot, you know what I mean? Like he, he's the he's the biggest key to give them a little bit of problems right there. Right. Um, yeah, because you got to put Aaron Gordon there. That means KCP has to guard Anthony Edwards, and then on like in reverse, it's like realistically like. A big key to the Lakers series was Michael Porter Jr. actually gave us work, and we didn't have no match for that versus the Timberwolves, who has the bodies to put on a guy like that. So that's why we say matchup wise, like Wolves really got it. It's just it's his temper, bro. It's that simple. Yeah, this I, 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 this series is like it's can't miss. Every single game is going to be. How does this Knicks Sixers series just felt where it was scrappy? Claw, dog fight. I think we're really going to get seven games of that. I cannot, cannot I wait. So. Huh. What an episode. What an episode. I feel like I just got so much off my chest. Yeah, I know you've been holding that son's friend. <laughs> That's why I just let you rock. I was like, yeah, he's... go ahead, bro. <laughs> uh, two, two rounded out. Going to do a, a really different type of a game almost that we're going to cut into shorts that we really haven't done before. Um. Uh, I actually need you to need you to grade, put a number one through ten, or rate these NBA bars. I mean, rap, rap game okay. been going crazy right now. A little beef <laughs> okay. going on right now. A little little push ups, little euphoria, little Drake. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking. Let's let's keep in line with that. Let's let's pull up some of the best NBA bars that we've seen over the last ever I've rap been around seventy. Since the 70s, so it's like 50 years almost, which is crazy. Um, and let's see which one's the best. So I need you to rate these NBA bars. So, first one here from your favorite rapper, Lil Wayne. <laughs> My favorite rapper. <laughs> That's a crazy insider. That's uh, low key, yeah. He didn't go. Hey. He said, Kobe doing work, 2 4 on my shirt. He the greatest on the court. And I'm the greatest on the verse. What are you rating that one out of ten? That's like a seven. That's like a seven. Man. Smooth seven. Smooth that's a seven. smooth. That's a smooth seven. Yeah, that's a seven. Fair. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. It ain't make me like. Go mm, it ain't make me nothing crazy, but it ain't. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's a seven. I got like twenty of them here, so I'm trying to find some good ones. All right, here's another one. Now we got Drake. A lot of people just hit me up when my name is mentioned. Shout out to KD. We relate. We get the same attention. It's raining money. Oklahoma City Thunder, the most successful rapper, 35 and under. Let me sprinkle the little on top. I was about to say, the little, right, right, the little, the end of it, that's like an eight. Because the end of it was like, okay, 35. I like that. That's like an eight. That's like an eight. I like that. That's not okay, bad. okay, okay. What about another, another Drake one? I moved through London with the Euro step. Got a sneaker deal and I ain't break a sweat. Cash me because I'm going out of there. I'm gone. I go from six to 23 like I'm, I'm LeBron. LeBron. <laughs> because like in the moment when I heard that, it was like a nine. I heard it so much now. But in the moment when I heard that, it was like a nine. That went crazy. Okay. <laughs> Next one I got for you here, J. Cole. That being good is good. That'll get you Drew Gooden. But me, I want Jordan numbers. LeBron footing. Can't guard me. Vince Lombardi, John Wooden. It's like a six. It's like a six. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just didn't make me feel that. Like, it was, I was like, all right, cool. It's like a six. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. <laughs> Let me scroll through. Can you find another one? No way. I just saw White Iverson on the top NBA bar <laughs> list. That's just disrespectful. Um, next one. Why next one? Russ. Uh, I only keep kings around me, Sacramento style. That's it. That's 
a two. That's like a two. I'm like, wait, where's like that's it? That's yeah, a two. He, he folded. He folded. That's that. a two. <laughs> okay, I could have. I could have said that. All right. Next one is from Jada Kiss, and y'all scared. I can tell that I'm gonna get bucks like Milwaukee, cause like Sam, I could sell. I. Ah, that's like a nine. I'm not gonna lie. Ah, that's like a nine. That was hard. That made me like, okay. That's a hard. I like that. I like that. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> if you make Marco, me do this big face, it's, it's, a, it's at least a Marco, nine. Marco. At least a nine. A oh, wrong one. I'm following. Oh, okay. You say you get that one a nine? That's a nine. That was hard. Okay. That was hard. All uh, right. Got another J. Cole one for you here. Till I popped off and got a bag for it. Now I'm at the Garden Center half court watching Junior catch it off the backboard. For context, he's talking That's about J. Dennis R. Smith. Smith. Oh, I thought he's talking. I thought he's talking about J.R. Smith. Nah, he's talking about Dennis Smith. He, I think Dennis Smith also from Carolina. Where, okay, where J. Cole was from. That's like a seven. That like a. That's like a seven. That's like a seven. Smooth okay. seven. Smooth seven. All right. Mad Drake ones here. This is crazy. Uh, another one. I can relate to kids going straight to the league when they recognize that you got what it takes to succeed. And that's around the time that your idols become your rivals. You make friends with Mike, but got to AI him for your survival. That's like an eight. That's AI, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like an eight. That's like an eight. Okay, okay. That's like an eight. Okay, okay. That's, that's like an eight. I'll rock with it. I'll rock with okay. it. Okay. <clears throat> Another J. Cole one. And this one is goaded to me. My life's like a movie truly. And they just dying for the part. But you'll never play me like LeBron versus Jordan. 20 years. Wonder who they going to say was more important. Both changed the game. Came through and made a lane. Who's to say that? Who's greater? Oh, we know they ain't the same. It's like a seven. It's a smooth. It don't make me like, mm, you know what I'm saying? It's fire. But like, it's like fire, but it don't make me like, mm, you know okay. what I'm saying? See how many more I got up in here. I really still can't believe why Iverson is on one of these lists. That's like, <laughs> that's not, that's not even a bar. Like, <laughs> let me see if there's any other good ones. Oh, how I'm going to forget one of the most most iconic ones. The six ain't friendly, but it's where I lay up. This a mother effing lay up. I've been Steph Curry with the shot. Been cooking with the sauce. Chef. Steph Curry with the pot. Uh, <laughs> it's like an eight because in the moment, I felt it. But like, all right, I heard it so much. But in the moment, it was like an eight for me. That's fair. That's fair. Dang, Drake was up here like. At least for seven times. Because he bro. always doing NBA bar. He always he doing is. that. He trying to be a hooper, bro. Low key. He trying to get everything. He trying to get abs. Well, no, bro. Crazy. I didn't even know you could plastic surgery to abs. Where are they doing that at, bro? Bro, you can plastic surgery anything at this point. <laughs> got Rick Ross out here talking about some. Tell him where you got your abs from. <laughs> That's crazy. Not the wing stop, man. <laughs> That's fun. I was going to make a couple of good shorts. Um, right. With that, though, that is going to do it for episode 55 of the Off the Glass podcast. If you made this far into it, we appreciate it as always. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Follow us on the socials as you see there at the bottom of the screen. Use our SeatGeek code. I was trying to forget to plug it. I mean, just one word Off the Glass, get you $20 off your first SeatGeek order. order. MLB is underway. If you're going to even the UFL underway, NBA playoffs, WNBA is going crazy. I just saw Kalen Clark still cooking people off the dribble in the preseason. Mm -hmm. Go to any sporting events. Use code off the glass for $20 off your first SeatGeek order. As always, I'm Billy. That's Dame. And we out. Peace.